it was an ad in the paper, one ad, you know, uh, paid $20 for a week to have this ad there. So looking for an engineer to make, well, I think I probably called it an electronic music easel because, you know, that easel is a nice metaphor. You know, you can paint music. I walked into a concert one day. I was going to the concerts on a regular basis and very timidly walked up to Mort Sabotnik and asked him if I could look at his studio. And he said, uh, fine, come on up. And so I went up and checked it out. And there were three tape recorders, and I was very envious of. So I started working in the studio, and I observed uh, they had techniques for, for constructing electronic music and constructing uh, studio production tapes. But they depended entirely on uh, oh, bomb sites and Hewlett Packard oscillators and leftover equipment from this and that. And I suggested that they use electronics to, uh, to build an intentional instrument, one designed for electronics. And that was a bit unheard of in those days. There was a, an Italian television engineer by the name of Paolo Kedoff. Uh, and uh, he designed an instrument called the Sinquet in the early 60s. He worked with a lot of musicians. Uh, I think he and I were similar in, in that we were, we were both engineers, but we liked working with musicians. Don and I worked for well over a year before there was any equipment, because we needed $500, which we didn't have. So we did it all on paper. And by the end of that year, when he started to work, I already knew, I had conceptualized the logistics of most of the what the modules were going to do, and uh, I'd even imagined doing what I just did, but didn't have the equipment to do. So the first two or three years of the synthesizer was actually uh, knowing that I could do it and practicing until it actually happened. At the same time that Bob Moog was inventing the synthesizer in New York, there was another engineer named Don Buchla. He basically invented the, the synthesizer as we know it about the same time Bob Moog did, and they didn't really know it. They didn't know each other. They are just independent. But Moog's philosophy was always to make it uh, so that a musician could relate to it from a conventional music point of view. So it had a black and white regular conventional keyboard. Buchlo didn't believe in that and still doesn't to this day that much. And so he was building synthesizers that you interfaced with various kind of touch keyboards and other non-traditional controller ideas. Perhaps in about 68 that I had heard of Moog and he had his first synthesizers out almost at the same time as I did. But we were one of us, myself, working with the West Coast aesthetic, and uh, Robert Moog was working on the East Coast in a totally different aesthetic, but strangely enough, built very, very similar modules, but their interconnection philosophy was quite different. Book is still doing fantastic designs, but he's a musician as well as an engineer. And more than that, uh, you know, more than me, uh, Buchla has his own musical vision. I, I don't have a real musical vision other than helping other musicians to do their thing. Don Buchla also was the first, he invented the sequencer. He invented a lot of things on synthesizers. And I, I think Bob Moog even said once that uh, Don may have built a modular synth before he did. Uh, but most people just don't realize that. By the time I met Don, which was a few years later, he had already progressed enormously in his vision of what this machine would be. I talked to Mort, and I was surprised to find that he never thought of the bukla as a performance instrument. He thought of it as something you recorded. You made a nice sound, you put it on tape, you made another sound, you overdubbed. And that's how Silver Apples was made. It was really a tape project. By the time I met Don, I was proselytized with his new vision, which is that he was making a performance instrument in the tradition 
of musical instruments that you played live. There's a, a work of mine uh, called Autumn Signal that was inspired by Merce Cunningham um, and how he moved his dancers in space. And using the Buchla synthesizer, I was able not only to um, modify the, the text material that I put into it, but also let the sounds, some of the sounds actually walk around the periphery of the sonic um, geography. Uh, some of them fly across. Uh, some of them, you know, be spatially located. I thought everybody would have one of these in, in like minutes. You know, I just, I, I really didn't. So I was very patient because nobody knew what was going on. If I played the bukla, nobody even knew that the sound was coming from the machine. And I always took the time to explain because I felt responsible, you know, for that I was going to, you know, help all this to happen. And uh, it was just never going to happen then. It wasn't time to happen. But now it's happening. <laughs> 